Everyone seems to love hidden design elements in furniture these days. And I have to agree, a hidden drawer or maybe a hidden cell phone charger is pretty cool. But I figured why not hide something that really matters? Along with that, if you are over the age of like 14 years old and you feel like society is unfairly judging you for enjoying a bowl of Fruit Loops or Count Chocula every once in a while and you've been trying to keep it a secret, I think I have a solution for you. This is the latest addition to my line of semi-absurd furniture and honestly this might be the dumbest one yet. But I wanted to incorporate a lot of turning into this piece as I'm trying to better my skills on the lathe. So I wanted to incorporate a segmented bowl and that was really the inception of this piece. So the first step to get started was to rip some strips of wood that could then be cut into segments. From there, I could start cutting the segments with the proper angle at each end and to proper length that would yield the size of circle that I wanted. There's quite a bit of math that goes into all of this depending on the amount of segments you want to use, the radius of the ring you want, the thickness of the ring, and luckily there are some online calculators to make all of this much easier. But just to get the broad picture, we know that a circle is 360 degrees, then we can divide that by the amount of segments we want to use. Let's say 8 for this example, and that will give us the angle in between each segment, so that divided by two will give us the angle we need on each end of each part. It's almost too easy. So with all of my segments cut for a few rings of a few different sizes, as well as a solid bottom layer, I could glue them all up using duct clamps, which worked great. Before I could glue all the rings together, I had to drill out the center of the bottom layer to glue in a dowel. All the corners didn't quite line up perfectly and I needed that bottom layer to be totally sealed. I didn't have any properly sized dowels on hand, so I had my buddy Greg, the X-Carve, help me out and he actually ended up being a huge help throughout this entire build. <laughs> So with that out of the way, I could send all the rings through my drum sander to get them nice and flat and to get all of them to their proper thicknesses. Or is it thick nigh? <laughs> and while I was doing that, I had Greg cut a disc that I could glue to the bottom of the bowl so I could chuck the whole thing onto the lathe. So with the bowl blank glued up, it was finally time to start turning. And this is actually the first bowl I have ever turned, so I still have plenty of learning to do, but I think it turned out pretty good for the first one. I started by turning most of the outside of the bowl, then did the inside, which I got to its fully finished shape. Once the inside was where I wanted it to be, I took the bowl off the chuck, then turned a jam chuck so that I could turn the bottom side of the bowl. This is essentially just a piece of wood that is turned down to fit the inside of the bowl, which is then pressed into place with a friction fit and it works really well. With that done, I turned as much of the bowl with the tailstock in place, then removed that to finish cleaning up the bottom. I 
then did some sanding and could add some finish. Then I delicately and gracefully removed the bowl from the jam chuck. So with the bowl done, I could get to work on the tabletop and that started with resawing a couple boards and getting them glued up. From there, it was time to cut out the recesses in the bottom of the tabletop so that the bowl could attach to it. I initially designed everything in Fusion 360, but I had to make a few adjustments to fit the size of the actual bowl that I made. So I ended up creating all of the CNC toolpaths directly in Easel, which is Inventable's free online software, and it works really great for simple designs like this. tabletop cutout, I could cut a bevel on the bottom side using my table saw. And this is a technique I use a lot to cut steep bevels on small round tabletops. And it really helps to lighten up the look and we all know that the bevel is in the details. At this point, I have the bowl and the tabletop finished. So the last main component to do was the legs. And I just went with a simple tapered three leg design for this. I turned these on the lathe as well. And I basically established my starting and end points and turned these to their final dimension. With those established, I did my best to cut a straight and even taper between those two areas. So while I pretend to know how to turn table legs, let me tell you how I'm also able to pretend to be a good web designer. Designer. And that is by using Squarespace, who I want to thank for sponsoring today's video. The best part about using Squarespace is that it can make even low-tech people like me seem high-tech. The idea of setting up a website can be daunting, especially when incorporating things like online stores, inventory management, and secure payment systems. But Squarespace makes all of that simple to do without needing to be a coder or a great web designer to make everything look and run smoothly. And that's because they have a ton of award-winning templates, each of which is optimized to work on desktop or mobile browsers, where essentially all you have to do is plug in your information and images, and you'll end up with a great looking result that will work anywhere. As you can see here, I'm able to create new product pages on my website with just a few clicks of the mouse. So I'm always able to keep my online store updated with whatever furniture pieces I have available. It's all pretty simple and straightforward, but if you are ever in need of any help, they have 24 seven email support to help answer any questions you might have. So if you're thinking about starting a website or if you already have one, go check out Squarespace to see if it might be a better option for you. Head over to squarespace.com slash four eyes for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code four eyes to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right. Thanks Squarespace. Let's get back to the build. With the legs done, it was time to connect them to the bowl, which was a little nerve wracking considering how much work I had done up until this point. But essentially what I did was make an angled jig using the test cut I had made for the bottom of the tabletop. And this would establish the splay angle for the legs. And with this securely clamped to my drill press, I could use a Forstner bit to drill out three recesses in the bottom of the bowl for the legs to seat into. It was a little tricky getting everything set up just right, but it ended up working perfectly. So the only thing left to do was to glue the legs into place. With the legs in place, I then needed to level the table and cut the proper angle on the bottom of each leg. So I leveled it with shims, marked a line around the bottom of each leg, which I then just cut with a handsaw.
With everything pretty much finished, there were two final details that needed to be done, a locking mechanism and a couple magnets for the spoon, which meant one last thing for Greg to cut. locking mechanism was essentially a cam lock that pressed against the bowl to hold it in place and the magnets were recessed into the spoon cutout and they used magic to hold the spoon to the bottom side of the table. Alright, there it is. Thank you as always for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this one. Check out the links to everything I talked about in the description, all of which help to support what we are doing here. So thank you again. And of course, until next time, if you're tired of eating your favorite cereal and being ashamed about it, just make yourself a hidden bowl table and keep it a secret.